about it is I was looking for a home. Uh-huh. But when I started shopping, I realized how nosy I was because I really like looking at houses. Like, really. Right. So if I got a passion for something, I'm always one of those people, as you probably know, that's going to go for it. And mm-hmm. try to get paid for my passion. Um, but then I noticed a lot of things about me. I, I love people. I love meeting people, being around. But I don't want to talk to them all the time. Like, I like short. Right. You know, it's, I don't want you to have to call you every day and be your friend, but I like you for like a month or so where I really like you. And then I'm, so it's kind of funny how, you know, those two things come together and it makes um, real estate for me um, fun. So just like you, if you love what you do. Mm-hmm. So, so now, I'm Mr. Mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. here's the other thing. What, when you're selling your homes, what is the the most common problem you have with our people, our Afro American people, in getting property? Is it uh, are the company biased? Do you think there's too much? Because I'm telling you, I buy a lot of property, right? And mm-hmm. one of the things that used to bother me was that if you got an agent that was got back to you when she got ready. Or, you know, I'm from the old school. So now you could do stuff in emails and PDFs and all this kind of stuff. But back in the day, you had to fill out 2,000 papers with your initials. And sometimes that can intimidate the average person if they're buying a home for the first time. Like your mindset really has to be right to do this. So what do you see being in the business that is a problem? And how you think people can overcome that problem as well? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because now it's it's not even it it doesn't even get to the paperwork because what I've learned about our people is that which is true on everything we hate rejection. So to find out I can't get a house, 
somebody telling me I can't get a house is worse than even trying and being told that you couldn't. So mm-hmm. instead of me being rejected or denied, I don't even try for it. So it's not that they can't get it or that they've taken a step. They're so scared to take that step that they already pull themselves out of the equation. So it's like um, – it's like with a relationship. You see a girl, she's real pretty. I mean, she likes you. You just don't know it. But instead of you going to approach and say hi, you're like, no, nah, she out of my league, and you walk away. Right. Never knowing that, you know, you had an opportunity. Um, so that's the first hurdle I have to get people over. It's like if you're paying now, I mean, I'm in North Carolina and Charlotte, the average rent is for a two bedroom, two bath can range anywhere from fifteen to nineteen hundred, depending on where you want to be. And if you want to be in the inner city, that's twenty five hundred for a two bedroom. Is it that much now? Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. How about around the stadium? What is the the, the <laughs> guys like? like uh, uh, one or two bedroom is going to, well, two bedroom is going to start off about twenty two. Um, and that's probably with about 600. <laughs> I mean, you are just, kidding uh, me. No, I'm not. Charlotte is happening now. You got to get back down here and visit me. I don't know what's your problem there, but it's okay. Man, <laughs> yeah, but I remember, I remember when they was building all that for a long time. I remember when they yeah. built the stadium. I remember when they was building those condos over there. Mm-hmm. I remember when they built the Westin. Yep. And now, wow. That's and that's on the cheap side. That's that's on the cheap side when you can find one for twenty two hundred to rent. So can you imagine renting, paying that amount of money? That's a that's a three hundred thousand dollar house. Right, um, that's true. Be purchasing, but we're so afraid of being told or or finding out that we can't get it. So once I talk to friends, family, future clients, um, and we talk and I'm, and I'm talking to them, they're like, no, nah, I'd rather rent. But why would you rather rent? And and if you can pay that amount, what if I told you you can buy your own house for that same amount of money? Um, and they're like, no, nah, my credit's messed up. And, you know, our community, we never really learn credit. Right. And, um, I can't even say, yeah, I was, I had perfect credit because we never learned that. Um, and other groups, races, that's what they teach their kids from a young age. We think if we don't get credit cards, it is bad to have credit cards. I don't want to go in debt. But if you don't have any proof to show that you can pay bills on time, mm-hmm. then how do you expect that somebody's going to give you $300,000 and they never even saw that you can pay a $500 credit card? So it's like no credit is just as bad as bad credit. Right. Um, So once we get to talking, they're like, well, you know, my credit's bad or they don't have credit, which I consider myself a real estate consulting because I try to take people um, all the way through the process. So I have a main guy that I use faithfully whenever someone has an issue. Even if they go to the lender and the lender tells them, you know, they're not ready, they need to – you know, they have some things on the credit they need to clean up. I send it to my credit guy. Mm-hmm. Um, my credit guy works with them. He calls me back in a month or two, and he's like, at least they're ready to go. So at that point, now I'm taking them back to the lender. Um, and I do try to explain in the beginning, the process isn't going to be all peaches and cream. It's not going to be a party. You're going to have to get dirty, but I got your back. Mm-hmm. Like you said, some agents kind of disappear as soon as they find out you have bad credit. You don't hear them from them anymore. Or you can have so great they credit and they can be lazy. You know, I've had that problem. Right. Oh. Right. Mm-hmm. I've been watching you go through that process too. Right. That it happens like that. It's like we leave it alone. Um, once we get to a certain level of our career, like that's not that's beyond us. Which. It's not fair. I mean, I'm 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 gonna stay true to my community regardless of where I am. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna take that other money that's easier, quicker. But I try to just make sure I educate you on what you need up front. Um, in different states, there's different things. Here in North Carolina, we have something called due diligence, um, where you have to pay the the seller a, a deposit or a good faith check. Mm-hmm. Okay, look, once we go on the contract, here's $500 to let you know. During this period of, of 
days while I'm doing inspections, appraisals, and all that stuff on the house, this money is yours. Now, if at any time the buyer backs out, they lose that money. Right. As long as they go to the end, that money is yours. So it's honest money, correct? Right. Well, no, earnest money is different. Okay. Um, a lot of states don't do due diligence. Like, I'm licensed here in North Carolina and South Carolina. South Carolina doesn't do due diligence. And I don't think in um, Vegas they do due diligence. But earnest money is different. That money sits in escrow. Okay. That's like a deposit, a down payment on the house. Right. Okay. Um, that's a larger amount. It can raise anywhere from 1000 to, you know, depending on the cost of the house, I've seen, you know, earnest money up to $10,000. Right. That money sits there now. If you, it's your money back if you back out during the due diligence period. Now, say for instance, the due diligence period ends on October 30th. Now it's mm-hmm. November 20th. You still haven't closed, but for whatever reason, you decide I don't even want to do this anymore. The seller can come back for that money and keep it. There is a fight now between at the attorney's office between you and, and the seller if that happens. But it usually, you know, by due diligence period, but every state doesn't have due diligence. But when I'm educating my client, I'm like, look, how much money do you have up front? Because these are the two checks that you're going to have to secure the house with. Okay, but, so to the people listen, I'm sorry to cut you off. So to the people listen, I want to share something with you too. In life... You do not have to go do everything by the fucking book because the world is about a hustle. So now let me tell you about good credit. Good credit is people go out and spend all this money to get somebody else to tell them to pay their fucking bills. And what I'm trying to tell the people listening, if you just pay your damn bills, your credit will get good. Everybody want to go get these expert-type people to pay bills. Now, if you're lazy, you ain't got the time to do it, by all uh-huh. means, get somebody to do this for you and work it out. If you don't have check stubs, if you don't have W-2, find somebody that can put that shit together for you to win in this world that we live in for life because everybody is getting over. And don't you think when you drive down the street, everybody got their house on the up and up? or nobody uh-huh. pulled no strings, or nobody did X, Y, and Z. Every story is different. So when you hear, yeah. right, so when you hear my story, you hear what I'm talking about, what I'm bringing to you, don't get intimidated thinking that you got to do everything right. Now, don't, now there's a flip side to stuff, too, for lenders and uh, 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 mortgage people called mortgage fraud. Now, your ass can go to prison, too. For mortgage fraud. <laughs> I'm just putting yeah. it all out there. So, you the know, buyer, you the, right. the agent, the lender, all of us will be sitting in jail. Yeah, everybody go to jail for mortgage fraud. So when I'm telling you stories, life is about choices. So what I got, what I like to do is give everybody an opportunity to make their choice. Hopefully you do the right thing. Hopefully you save your money. Hopefully that you, if you get married, that the person that you married to, you have good credit. Or if you're single, you have good credit. If your credit is bad, from hearing the show, we're not over. Oh, just not done yet. I'm just in, um, in, in, injecting oh. some information here. I'm talking to the, I'm talking to the um, people back. And oh, TK, what you do is, thing, yeah. Oh, sorry. One thing about the credit and those credit repair places, if you're mm-hmm. paying ninety, a hundred dollars a month for somebody to keep sending disputes to the uh, to the trans union and that, that's a big rip off. Um, right. And people don't get it. It's like I try to help people. I'm like, my God charges a flat fee. Um and it and it's what, two fifty for four months. And he's not he's it's so many aspects of credit that has to be looked at that people don't realize. Um um, your address. When you have a ton of addresses on every address you've ever lived there, you're sitting out at somebody's house, you had a letter mailed somewhere else, all those addresses on your credit report, it affects your credit. It, right. It, it'll affect um, what collections go on your credit because it's, it's just systematic. If it, if it has your address and this credit collection has that address, it matches it, 
and then it keeps it on your credit. Well, if you can't find that address on your credit report, it has to drop it because it's all systematic. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's things like that that's on your credit that's messing you up. Um, I'm not the credit expert, but I talk to my credit guy all the time. Right. And then a lot of people think if they get all the bad stuff, where I didn't even realize um, back in my journey, it was a – I'm thinking if you get everything off your credit, well, if you take something off my credit from 20 years ago, bad or good, and you take it off and, and then you only count what I've had in the last six years, I'm, I would look better if I had that 20 years to show that I've had credit for 20 years, good or bad, but that length of time that you have established credit, it, it pulls your credit score up. But a lot of times they don't tell us that they keep disputing. And then a lot of times you can dispute them all and you still don't have a credit score because you never applied for anything during the time that you were disputing. Mm-hmm. Some people do have to get a prepaid credit card to start off somewhere. Or yeah, you got to start to somewhere. Right. You but have to. Those, those, when you're paying $100 a month, um, that's one thing your, your audience can call me for because I will connect them with my credit guy. Um, to help them with that, and he's a credit counselor. He's not a fixed-year credit Right, so give them your so office I, number I, or a, a number that you want. You don't want to give out your private number because people will blow, call you to death. So give a number. Get, put, they give don't us get a the number you have. Yeah, give <laughs> us a number. Give us a number that um, that people can call her. It's 704-216-4333. Okay, say it again, please. Seven zero four two one six four three three three. Right, and like to the people that's listening too, you have to start from somewhere. If you have no credit or you have bad credit, you can truly start the day in a year, two years. Do you would think that it was just yesterday that you started getting your credit good? My credit has always been good. But when my credit got to 800, you couldn't have told me nothing. <laughs> Do you hear me? Even though I didn't want to buy anything, I didn't want to buy nothing. That's the thing that's very important. It's been on my mind, at least, for a minute, because I do a lot of reading, and I just see that people, we got to start from somewhere, and people who truly listen to me, and I'm tired of, my homies, beautiful women, ugly women, whatever, you know, not owning nothing. Because, you know, and I started thinking that way when I was a crook, right, back in the day. Because <laughs> when, you, when, you when you go to court and you go to jail and you get ready to talk about, and you talk about bail bonds, you know what the first thing they ask you? Do you have property? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you could put your house up for property to get the hell out of jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. You got to own stuff. Now, yes, I want to tell you a story. For years, I used to say, I'm not owning nothing because you truly don't own your property. And let me explain to you what I mean. If you have a $500,000 house, a million dollar house, or a $250,000 house, you pay it off, you still have to pay taxes on the house. And if you die, you leave your house to your children and your kids don't pay them taxes, let's say six months to a year, they could take the house. And that's yeah. and, and that's a ripoff to me because I feel, and that's just the government, and, and, and you know what it is? There's no way around it, just life. But what bothers me about that, I think that when you pay off your house, you should own the land and the house, and that will make people want to buy even more. Or because you actually own all of it and there's no more payment. But the way this is set up, you'll be paying taxes for infinity. Your grandchildren, your great, 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 great grandchildren will always have to pay taxes. And in one year or one, well, you know, six months to one year, if they don't, they could take the home. So is there any other way around it? Nope. I just want nope. people, if, you're ever, if your mindset is like that the way I used to think to, there's nothing you could do about it. So it's best to own that way you could come in when you want. You ain't got nobody running over your head upstairs. 
nobody downstairs, no one in your hallway. <laughs> when you walk yeah. in, you know, nobody, you're scared because you see somebody, a group of guys or a group of girls standing by one door, you got to go past them, or young girls or young boys walking down the stairway, and you're uncomfortable. You know, so that's the thing. And, and once you get your credit good, now if you got your house, and you go get a car, one of the greatest things about having good credit is that when you got good credit, they tell you to take the car for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it for two weeks before. <laughs> yeah. When you got good <laughs> credit, they <laughs> say, keep it. Right. Go and just, go and enjoy yourself. But they let me take you back off of what you were saying. Oh, yeah. Like let, me, a, mm. let, me, let me take you back off of what you were saying about the taxes. In different states, like here in North Carolina, yes. if you don't pay your HOA, you can lose your house. Whoa. Um, so, yeah, so it's not just the tax. Can I explain to people HOA what HOA is? is it? The HOA is, uh, um, look at you, now you didn't caught me off guard, but the HOA Homeowners is Homeowners Association. Homeowners Association, Association right. right. They say any time, and they have dues, they can range anywhere from $50 a year to, I've seen them, 1200 a month, depending on where you're living at and what it's giving you. The HOA can be anything from just keeping the upkeep on the street, the lights, or it can be if it has a pool, a tennis court, all those things, it's the HOA. This is community property. We're all putting in money to keep upkeep of our, right. property, our community um, property. Well, if at any time you decide you don't want to pay your HOA and they can send you out a couple of letters, they can go and they can repossess your house. It can be you can owe them only, but people will be like, well, it ain't nothing but $100 a month that I have to pay off. Or they'll put it off because it's $200 quarterly. They'll put it off. And then they wonder why they get this, the sheriff coming to their door. Because here in North Carolina, the HOA can take your house. And it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's yeah, the craziest was, thing I've ever heard in my life. So it's not just taxes in North Carolina. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's now. Let me crazy. ask you a question. Did you say twelve hundred a month? Yeah, there is, and most of the ones that are like twelve hundred a month would be like uptown Charlotte, where it's a um, high rise, and they have a pool in the building, and they have valet parking. Um, valet trash pickup, then it, the HOA goes high. Um, so it's, it, it, it can go up at high. That's yeah, insane. So, yeah, so you have so you to pay be in, I'm sorry to address, so you're paying $2,200 mm-hmm. to $3,000 in your mortgage. Then mm-hmm. on top of that, another 1200 a month in the home association. Well, if you're renting, you don't pay a homeowner's association. Right, but I'm saying you're buying a house. Like, like if you own if you a buy condo, a house, mm-hmm. like you own the, you that's a, a, condo. Also a condo, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. If you buy a condo, yeah, and your your mortgage payments are twenty two hundred a month, depending on what condo you got or whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And the HOA can be anywhere up there. I mean, a lot of them are like four hundred, but the newer buildings that they build in there, they're twelve hundred a month easily, and um, HOA. Um, so, and then when you miss it, like I said, they can they can take that house from you. So I always try to tell people that when when you're looking for a house, the lender is going to look at if there's an HOA. So they're going to see your debt to rate um, income ratio, and they're mm-hmm. going to be able to tell you if you can afford a place where the HOA is a certain amount because it's not really your payment really wouldn't be twelve hundred if you have a two hundred dollar HOA fee monthly. Right. If you, and if all you can afford is twelve hundred, they're gonna say, No, you need to find you know, move down into something more reasonable that's a thousand dollars, that'll come out to a thousand dollars. So you might not get approved for say, um, it's a condo of one eighty five. Mm-hmm. Um instead you might only be able to get approved for one sixty five if they have the HOA because they have to put that in, not only the taxes, they have to put that HOA fee in there. But I'm no expert in the lending part. Right. But um, a lot, and then also when you said, um, you know, people need to know, get started. My thing is learn where you are. It's, it's, how do you know you have bad credit? How do you know how bad, what do you really know if you don't even go get, I hate to say it like that, but test it. 
It's just like somebody said, well, how do you know if you got this? You're taking all this medicine. Why don't you just go to the doctor and see what's wrong with you? It probably isn't mm-hmm. that bad. Right. But it's the same way. See where you are. See if you can get a house. If you can't, see if it's uh, if it's realistic that you might be at about it three months or six months. But at least know where you stand so you know where you need to go. Um, and know but, how the and know how to hustle people. Let me explain to you what I mean by hustling. And know how to sacrifice. Some of you people who are listening right now are saying, Mom, I don't have enough money for a down payment. I can't mm-hmm. do this. I can't do that. So here's the here's the play of the year I'm about to give to you people. Sometimes you got to move in with a friend. Sometimes you got to move in with your back with your mother, or your dad, or ex boyfriend, or ex girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Guys, you might have to give us some dick. Ladies, you might have to give us some pussy every now and then. We are That's not going to tell them that. No, I am going to tell them that. I'm keeping it real. But the, Why can't we tell them to go drive Uber? Or no, 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 no. Listen to what I'm saying. No, no, listen to what I'm saying. Listen. I play with you. Listen to what I'm saying, though. This is some real shit. Listen. I am and not. You, and you stay at these people's house until you stack your paper. Now you can drive Uber. Now you can do all these other things. All I'm saying is learn how to survive and stack yeah. your paper. To get on your feet so that you're never in a shelter. Because you know what's crazy? When I travel this world and I see our beautiful women on Instagram who just take pictures for no reason, right? You you be looking at, they're not selling no clothes. The bitches are laying on the beach half naked or whatever, but not getting a check. Now, I don't know their financial situation, but I know everybody ain't getting paid. I just don't <laughs> want people to end up in a shelter, at least. That's so nice of you. It's getting uh, bad out here, and I travel, and mm-hmm. I you know how much I travel, and I see yeah. it. And people have one foot in a shelter and one foot in a place to live. And here's the crazy thing. 20 years. Is going to go by like it's two weeks. Some people are like, oh, I got time. No. 20, mm-hmm. 30 years go by in a blink of an eye. That so you've got to take advantage of it. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to stay focused. And you've got to get your paper on. That's how come, like, in my shows during the past weeks, I was telling everybody for men and women really start dating each other. I used to tell them to save and get $25,000 in your account before you even start saying hello to a female. Because you got to be, this is what I'm saying, you got to be qualified to Mm date. If you want to fuck and all that, guess what? You got to qualify. A lot of men and women out here bullshitting each other and they're not Mm -hmm. qualified to even be in a relationship. So, that was get, true. Right. So get on point. Stack your paper. Everybody have their own place. And see, here's the thing. I know girls moving with dudes sometimes and guys moving. But have your ain't nothing like having your own shit. Oh, yeah. That no one can tell you to get the fuck out their house. And, baby, you don't <laughs> want no word. man telling you to get the fuck out of his eyes. You don't want that feeling, but lately I've been seeing women put them out, right? And it's getting so bad <laughs> that the women are videotaping this shit. Oh, these right. hoes is putting shit out on the lawn. I saw a video with a bitch had to call his, his, whatever he bought for groceries that week, the bitch had it on the lawn. Coca-Cola cases. Oh, my gosh. No. The Coca-Cola uh, uh, sandwich piece, <laughs> Wonder Bread, a microwave, a place. He didn't want none of his stuff. And he came, and he was in a nice truck. So he was walking. He was walking to pick his stuff up, right? But the, the girl had a hammer over her shoulder just in case I guess if he got wrong she was going to nail the nigga hit that nigga side in his head <laughs> but he talking shit he talking shit why are you picking this Coca Cola up I guess he got to have it his way right but I'm tired of seeing it <laughs> but you, um, 
Oh, my God, you were so wrong. But, you know, all jokes aside, I absolutely love helping a black man get a house. I'm not sure if that's right for me to say that, being a licensed real estate agent, but absolutely. Because they always think they need a woman or need to be in a relationship in order to take that step. Right. But when they find out they can do it and they get this big house and that's their house, like, can't nobody tell you you got to go? It ain't no split, none. This is your house. You get it by mm-hmm. yourself. You know, the reward that feels to me because it's like every time I've said it, it's closed with one, he's shaking. Like, why are you shaking? Because I can't believe this is really happening. I'm like, well, believe it. It happened. Right, you know, right, him, right. Him just saying, I want to rent. You know, I'm thinking about renting. You know, I can do up to 1900 I'm like, why don't you, you ever thought about buying? Well, how am I about? And like you said, down payment, they got down payment assistance in every city. And if you had a job, you got a 401k, hopefully you're maxing it out if the job is maxing you. And just take advantage of it because that's a hardship withdrawal where you don't have to pay that back. Mm-hmm. So if you worked at your job a few years and you didn't put 15000 is in, in your 401k, when you get ready to buy a house, you can just submit a request to have that money removed, and you don't have to pay that back. That's your money. So a lot of ways you can get around this, but you and them getting put out with his Coca-Cola on the front lawn. Oh, gee. Yeah, that's crazy. You me that? And, <laughs> can you send me that video? <laughs> and and, to, and to, the young, to the young kids and girls that's listening who are in their 20s, one mm-hmm. day you're going to reach this, this, this plateau of uh, you're going to want to own a home. And I want you guys to listen to the stuff that I'll be putting on my podcast to use as a blueprint to survive. And my point is, if you're 20, 21 now, start saving your money, start with keeping your credit good, and don't let no man, don't let no woman fuck up your credit. If a man says, yo, buy me a car, this is this how it was when I was coming up where girls would um, put a name, put their name on cars, and the nigga get the car, and a the bitch ain't never got a ride in it, and he dropped right. another hole. Now you got the mess right, 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 right. You got crime, murder one, and all this type of shit. So <laughs> I'm preventing all that on my show. So but you, you know, know what? CK, back in our day, when I was in my 20s, and I loved me from CK. Um, but if I would have bought one of those little houses down in uptown Charlotte back then, when I had a pretty decent job, mm-hmm. um, but I was living, you know, you called me and be like, Elise, uh, I need to see you in Columbus. Okay, I was jumping on the plane. I didn't care. But if I would have just took a little piece of my brain in my 20s and, and bought one of those houses at $30,000, $40,000 back then, if that mm-hmm. much. Right. Those houses right now, people are paying for them. They, they're, they're, it's the thing called regentrification, but they, they're they're buying those homes because they're so they're uptown Charlotte, which is downtown mm-hmm. in most cities. But they're buying those houses from people, old people, or say your your grandmother owned one and she passed it down to you. You thought, well, this is fifty thousand dollars. I can just go ahead and sell it. But now. Their Pam, maybe one fifty, depending on the condition, but they're building half a million dollar houses on that lot. So if you, if I would have bought it then, I would have paid it off by now. Mm-hmm. If I try to get my age, and I would have been sitting on a half a million dollar lot. So yeah, but people don't think like that. 20s, but but I'm, I, I, we need to tell them when you right. have a show where you touch so many different people and ages. You need to educate them too. Like if there is a place and, and you can get that house for ten, twenty thousand, 20000 or maybe you found something that was maybe 60000 you got to think bigger. You got to hold on to something because when all else fails and things let go, you don't have nothing. I mean, because cars, they don't do They anything. lose value. Everything except for diamonds mm-hmm. in a house. I mean, a house right. doesn't lose value. But if I would have just taken my brain there and just took, because I know I spent 30000 easily in a year, probably in a few months. But if I would have just invested just one that time, me and my sister talk about it all the time because we're so mad at ourselves that we didn't, nobody told us. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody said anything. We were living here in a time where we could have got one of these condos. The Harrison was here. We could have got one of those condos back then for 50000 Those condos now started 350 up. Right, it's true. 
So it's like you have to educate them because, like, with my niece, I tell her all the time, I'm a, you're going to get one of these little houses over here. As soon as I find one that go up, you're going to take, well, I'm broke, Auntie. Well, if you think you're going to move back to Charlotte and you want to live uptown and you're going to be okay, now, if you take this and you buy this house for 150 you put a renter in it two years while you're doing your residency in D.C. When mm-hmm. you come back, we go ahead, get it gutted, updated, and you want to live in this house or you want to sell it, you will have a few hundred thousand dollars in your pocket, but now you can walk and you can do it and you'll be 20, what, 27, 28 years old. Right, right. So, but we have to teach them. It's like you got to educate them because if you teach them that they can do it. Yeah, that's what I call them. They'll do it. You know, I, that's what I call them. Like, I'm going to do a two-part series. I'm going to do you, and then I'm going to do one of my other homies next week. But I, I, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I'm so passionate about this right now because we have to take the time to put our people on the map and let them know mm-hmm. that uh, that we care and let them know that uh, we want to give them the knowledge to win. Because, you know, like I said, we're not going to make excuses about the white man and about the different laws and all this kind right. of shit. What we're going to do is prevail and um, leap over the obstacles. And we're going to do it. Happen. But they got to yep. know. It's, it's pretty much about educating. Of course, I can't sell houses in every single state, and I can't help somebody in every single state. But I'm willing to provide the education, and I will refer somebody that I'm, I'm confident in that can do the job. So Now, what's your website, hon? It's um, my first and last name. So it's www.elisealexander.com. So it's A-L-E-C-E, Alexander, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R.com. And that'll take you right to my website. You can um, go to contact me, put in your information, and I can – give you a call back um, because it'll shoot me an email immediately. So that's another way. And it also gives you a place where you can leave some notes so I can know what I'm calling you for. If it's something you want to get some information on credit and how you can um, get there or you need an agent you're looking for, you need a um, lender because I have lenders that are licensed all over, you know, the United Mm -hmm. States. So it's not just because they live here doesn't mean they're not licensed in Texas. Um, So I have that stuff set and um, cause you just, it, I want everybody to win. I wish someone would have educated me when I was younger besides mm-hmm. you they educate me and me take a second to even. That's true. <laughs> I, I dropped the knowledge yeah. right back in the day. Sure it is. Man, so here's my other question. Now, that's how other... you're supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like, and, and, and you got me stuttering because I'm thinking about all Yeah, because you dating. made it hard for me to date anybody because I'm like, hold up, you don't open my door. Like, what do you mean right. you're not opening my door? I'm sitting in the car like for 10 minutes waiting for him to come open the door. That's right, you got to <laughs> open that damn door. I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. that you share that with the world. Now, here's my other question. Okay. Here's my other question. What about... um? Okay, you threw me off about that. One second, darling. Inheritance. Say that. How do people protect themselves when they get a house, they pass away, and they want to leave it to someone? Or got um, a will. So a will is important, correct? A will is important in everything, yeah. but I just wanted to know. Yeah, you need to have a will set up now. Um, different states is different things. Again, North Carolina is special, very special. Um, North Carolina, say, for instance, me and you are married. We've been separated for 20 years, but we never went and got a divorce. You got a new mm-hmm. woman. You, you and her have bought a house here in North Carolina, and um, you go driving home from the airport, and somebody, drunk driver, hits you and kill you. Now, your girlfriend living in the house that y'all had built, Guess whose house that is now once you die? Ain't that crazy? Yeah, if if I never if when you go if you're married here, if you're if you're separated and that spouse does not sign what is called a free trade agreement, that house is your spouse's. Um, it doesn't even really matter what you put in the will because it doesn't even go to the kids. Like say for instance you had kids before you got married. It mm-hmm. doesn't go to the kids, it goes to the wife. So that's another thing that I is important is, you know, if you made some mistakes when you were younger, clean that stuff up. Don't 
don't leave it lingering around. Right, right, that's true. Do not leave it lingering around because now you, I mean, there's ways around it which I'd rather not talk about, but um, like having a trust and putting in a trust instead of in your name. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people jump into some things and North Carolina will burn you because this is a Bible Belt. They believe in the sanctity of marriage. They are not trying to have you divorce. I mean, if you get married... We get married today. We fall out next month. We don't. We move away from each other. Don't like each other. We can't even get divorced until we've been separated, living apart for a whole year. So we're gonna be separated longer than we were married. And then when that when that year is up, if you had property when I said I do, that's our property. Now I can say I want you to sell it because I want the proceeds. Right, right. That's why like I know. Part. I don't believe in that marriage shit. Oh, you gonna marry me, dang it! Mm-hmm. I ain't get. I don't, uh, I don't believe in that marriage stuff. No, 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 no. Go mm-hmm. ahead and do it. Take one for now. Nah, if I get married, I'm. It's, it's gonna be one of two things that's gonna happen. And they people are like you to sign a prenup. Uh, of course I would. He gonna sign the life insurance. I'm policy. too. So yeah, I'm too old that. for a marriage. I, I'm everything going to my babies, my kids. That's the way it goes. Now, yeah. it's some compu- it's some, I know what I was going to say before you got, I got thrown off. Now, there are some people who are computer illiterate. So can we give the number one more time? Because sometimes people don't want to get on the computer or they don't know how to use a computer, but they want to get home. And I want mm-hmm. them to be able to reach you as well. So can you give your number one more time as well? Okay. It's 704-216-4327. Now, here's another question. Say your guy lives with his girl. Uh-huh. They're together, but he's paying the mortgage, right? Aren't that how it's supposed to be? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Hell no. Them days are going. And, 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 and uh, stop interrupting uh, because you'll be throwing me <laughs> off, damn it. <laughs> I was just, you just threw me yeah. off. Like, so here's, here's my thing. No, 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 we'll get back to that. It's not a problem. <laughs> and the guy's living with the girl, and he's, pay, he's paying the mortgage. If you allow me to talk, you would have heard that he's paying the mortgage. But then they break up. Mm-hmm. And the girl gets the equity in the house. And he leaves the home. He's not in the home no more. He goes on about his business. But he finds out that she's selling the home. How can he go about getting equity, part of the equity, or is he fucked? Um, if if they're not married, he fucked. He's fucked, um, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, unless they can talk things, work things out. Um, but if they weren't married or if they didn't go on the loan, and on the deed together, because man, you can go on a deed together. Right. Um, it and 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 the thing about it is, it it takes one to buy, two to sell. So she went and bought the house, but they weren't married. If he didn't yeah. sign the deed, or she didn't put his name on the deed, it's nothing really he can do um, about it because it is her house, and he was just mm-hmm. paying for somewhere to live. So he was gonna have to do it. Anyway, but I, I won't. I'm I'm going the wrong direction, but no, 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 no. We, I want to talk really about do. this. This is important. <laughs> I want it's, people it's to know this so really. that when they get ready to go buy a home or they get ready to live with a young lady, that if they paying that mortgage, know your rights. They don't have it. <laughs> well, that's my point. My point is, yeah. is not knowing your rights, have the knowledge of what you're getting into. Right, because if if she already had that house and you come moving in and y'all never got married, it's still her house. It's still um, her house, guys. You hear the old lady. So right, or ask them to put your name on the deed. Too. Yeah, ask them to put your name on the deed so if they ever sell that home, you can get she some has. of your money back. Yeah, especially, like you said, if she has equity in the house. But... um a lot of it's people don't think like that. They think, you know, we, I've been living here. I gave her 20000 to put down. That's my house, too. No, it's not. No. Nope. your name is not on the deed and you did not put your name on a, on a loan, you don't own any parts of that house. Now, marriage is different, but these relationships and the shacking up, that, that doesn't yep. give you any right at all. There's a lot of that out there, and that's my point. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't he supposed one. to pay the mortgage? No. 
Well, here's good. the thing, and I'm glad you brought that. You, I, I believe that you pay the mortgage if you really in love. I'm talking about really in love. And to me, people who are in relationships today are not really in love. They like each other. Things are a convenience, but you're really not truly, truly, truly in love. I don't think love has anything to do with it. If you're sleeping, waking, you're waking up at my house every day, what's that got to do with love? You that's what I'm here. saying. That's, that's convenience. Right, so you need to pay, you, you're going to pay the bills. Otherwise, you don't need to be sleeping here. No, 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 no. It's not that you pay the bills. We come to I mean, understand no, and we figure out what bills you're going to pay. But just because I'm fucking you and I'm at the house, I mean, I should pay all the bills. That's insane. Okay, not all the bills, but the big bill, yeah. No, it's... it's Unless it's, the situation happened where things change, I can understand that. Well, here's the thing. It's based on the economical, financial situation of the man and the that female. too, yeah. You know, now, because most women, and y'all be dating these bums out here, <laughs> and they can work at McDonald's, but he got some no. dick, and let me finish, and he got some good dick, and like, if you just take cable... And pay for groceries and you still pay the mortgage. Or these guys will get and have the house and got a girl who gets good head and a fat ass. Oh, you ain't got to pay nothing. I just love it. And you come home one day, the bitch up stole all your shit and just left you the ceiling fan. <laughs> 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 oh, you guys, the fucking single fans spinning real fast, too. You know how I'm going to go so fast? Just wobbling. <laughs> and they turned it on because when they was moving shit out, they was hot. So the motherfucker turned the ceiling fan like, yo, it's hot. Turn the fucking ceiling fan on. <laughs> Bro, you fucked. So my yeah. point is, everybody, on the T.K. Kirkland show, something I'm going to say to you, and I need everybody around this country and this world to listen. We talked about relationships, homes, credit, and the word, the, the, the things I want you to remember the most is this thing called CYA, cover your ass at all times. And if you yeah. CYA all the time, you, it's a 99% chance you won't get fucked. It's a 99% chance you will win at real estate, at life, at your choices that you'll make moving forward. Let's give at least a round of applause. At least I want to thank you to the people from Japan, the Germany, the Philly, the Jersey City, New Jersey, the Compton, California, to Oakland. Play the player, pimp the pimp. May God bless you. May your pain be champagne. And we'll see you on the next episode. Good luck. Thank you, Doc. Thanks, Zach. Uh, bye-bye. This episode of the TK Kirkland Show was produced by Chris Thomas, executively produced by Charlemagne the God. This is an official Loudspeakers Network production.